Hello, hello, it's Boxing Day, Boxing Day, yes, Boxing Day. That's actually the second Sunday, or second day of our Christmas season. Christmas lasts as a season for 12 days, just like the song, 12 Days of Christmas. And, you know, as we go through this week here coming up, we hear more and more about, you know, in our church readings about who this Jesus is and the birth of Christ and all the events that unfolded afterwards. I'm actually going to take a step back to last so, uh, last Sunday morning's Old Testament reading, though, here, and, and share that with you as we listen to Second Samuel chapter 7, where it's technically still that, you know, part of our Advent readings, but a beautiful reading to consider as we not only dig into the promises of God from the Old Testament, but also consider, you know, what kind of a God it is that we have that comes to be with us in the person of Jesus Christ. So Second Samuel chapter 7. Now, when the king lived in his house, King David, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See, now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be a prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me, and your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. It's a fascinating scripture reading in the Old Testament as not only David comes into his own and gets established there in Jerusalem as this king that the Lord had chosen and throughout the whole time leading up into that, they didn't have a temple in, in Jerusalem for the worship of the Lord. And so instead what they had is, is, well, the Ark of the Covenant and then the priests would take care of that and that would be carried together with them as well as the scriptures and this whole thing about living in a tent and what's all that about. Well, it's that the Lord was a Lord that moved with his people because during that whole time from, you know, the Lord rescuing them from, well, the people of Israel out of Egypt through with Moses, well, how did the Lord travel with them? Well, they made a tent, and that's where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. And that's where the Lord was, and the Lord was visibly present in the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of smoke by day. But God traveled with his people in a tent. Here's the cool thing, because that whole language of tenting comes in from, well, not only here, but then also from the Greek, Greek translation of the Old Testament into, you know, the introduction to John's Gospel, where it says, "In the Lord, um, the Lord, uh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us." The word for dwell is actually tented among us. Jesus is the fulfillment of not only that, all of that wandering, that tenting but the way in which Jesus is the fulfillment also of this promise to David. You know, when we don't study our scriptures, when we just do this pick and choose a verse, the way in which sometimes, you know, I see on the way people do on, on all kinds of different social media forms of, you know, this is the word that the Lord has spoken to me kind of a thing. No, 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 don't use scripture as a, a um, you know, a kind of a diving board where you, kind of bounce on it and then say because I've used this that I'm usually that I'm actually actually speaking God's word to you we have to read it all together and these words that we hear through Nathan the prophet to David are so important 
David wanted to build a temple for the Lord because David was dwelling in this grand palace at this time. And here the Ark of the Covenant where the Lord was supposed to be housed and, and you know where he dwells among his people is just this shabby old tent that people have been fixing up for, for well over a hundred years. What's up with that? And Nathan's response, the Lord's response through Nathan is a fascinating one. It says, I'd never asked for a temple. I've dwelt wherever my people are. I've been with them right from the beginning, which was this huge affront to the way in which, you know, the gods and the, the various different divinities and deities were conceived of by all the nations around because they were gods that were associated with a hill or a valley or that particular spring over there or that well over there and all these sorts of things along the way. God just broke all those boundaries and says, I'm not a god of a hill or a god of a valley or a god of this place or that. I travel with my people and I dwell with my people. Fulfilled in Christ. And the word of the Lord through Nathan to David was, and instead of you building me a house, because it's the same word, bait, which is used for temple as well as house, he says, I'm going to build you a house. And the bait the word bait, that's where we get Bethlehem, bait, B-T-H, bait. It's the same word that refers to a dynasty, a dynasty. I'm going to build for you, David, a dynasty which will last forever. Here the Lord not only sharpens that promise that it's through David's family line that the promised Messiah would come, the promised Savior, but we have all of these beautiful elements which are picked up throughout the New Testament as a fulfillment of that with Christ, descended from David. Oh, what a wonderful gift. And Jesus, who comes to be the one, the way John writes in, well, the introduction to his gospel, saying that God comes and he tents among us again, so that the way Jesus describes to the Samaritan woman as he meets her at the well, saying, well, the time is coming when neither Jerusalem or Samaria will be the place where you worship God as though it had to be this one physical temple that you have to go to that one place but instead you know people will worship in spirit and in truth as Christ comes to us tents and clothes himself in our humanity calls us to be a part of that so that we're clothed in baptism so in his tent joined with the body of Christ and joined to the full, full round of his life, his death, his resurrection, so that God dwells with his people through his word, in the sacraments, by his incarnation, so that as we gather, we need to gather. Don't fool yourself into thinking you don't need to gather as Christians. Nowhere in the scriptures do they, does it ever say that you can be a Christian just all by yourself, all off on your own. You don't need other Christians or church. Instead, what we hear is, is well, the verse from Hebrews 10, do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Because precisely what comes in the verses before, through baptism, that sprinkling with water, and through the body and blood of Jesus, not only we have that pledge of a clear conscience before God through the forgiveness of sins, but through the very flesh of Christ received sacramentally. It's a sacramental passage. We have entrance into the true heavenly holy of holies, what the earthly tent and the earthly temple were all symbolizing. With Jesus we have that entrance into heaven where God himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are made available to us through that tent of his flesh, which we are brought into as the Lord throws and casts that tent over us in the waters of our baptism so that we are made not only external witnesses to what Jesus has done, but he welcomes us in and says, here, I've done this for you. God has built that eternal dynasty through Jesus, where he tents among us through that descendant of David so that he ascends to that rightful throne where we call him King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that Prince of Peace who reigns by his grace, by his grace, by his forgiveness, which we so often forget. 
is when we don't actually hear and listen the words of Scripture and build on that promise, making use of that grace where Jesus says he's going to give it. Well, we keep thinking and following, falling back into that old brokenness is, have I done enough? Am I good enough? But no, with Jesus, he says, I have done enough and more than enough to bring you into heaven. Come and receive and be a part of that gift. So we celebrate Christmas then, <clears throat> 12 days of Christmas, second day of Christmas beautiful day of Christmas we remember that Jesus comes in order to call us to be a part of everything that he has done and he opens that door through his flesh through baptism so that he throws his tent over us so that we can be a part of absolutely everything that he's come to do within within time as that incarnate, flesh-bearing, human Son of God. But human, not merely in the same sense as you and me, but human and fully divine. Where when we have Jesus, we have God in our hands, in our lips. And he embraces us there again and again. May the Lord bless you so that as we continue this Christmas journey, continue our own earthly pilgrimage, we build on Christ, Christ and Christ alone, because he is that cornerstone, you know, that open door to heaven. He's the one that calls you to join him. So do come out. Do come out. Introduce yourself. Let me know. And as we build... Let's join with that angel song, glory to God in the highest, to this little Christ child, and peace to his people on earth. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we continue our pilgrimage here through this Christmas season, bless us in our day-to-day -day activities so that even on Boxing Day here with all of the hustle and bustle, the way that our society runs around and chases all of the deals or all of the commercialism of our world, that rather than being led astray by all of that with things that, well, that pass away, things that need to be replaced, that you lead us always back to that one perfect essential gift that, well, that we don't need to return, but instead the one who returns to us time and time again through that same word, through that same gift of the sacraments to embrace us and make us a part of that bigger tent of his grace and his love. Help us to not only see and, 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 and grow in our understanding of that great marvelous gift and that wonder of who this Jesus is and what he has done, but that also the way that he continues to call us to be a part of that through his word. Give us that courage by your Holy Spirit to follow that voice of our Savior in his gospel message, and those gospel gifts, those gifts of forgiveness where he says, here it is, here is that forgiveness for you, for you come and take. So that in the midst of all the hustle and bustle, that we don't get led astray by all of the distractions that are out there so that we miss out on the gift. But instead, that we build on Christ and Christ alone for each and every day of our lives. Building on that gift of eternity, where he comes to us as that eternal God right to where we are today. Comfort us, bless us, strengthen us, grant us that joy. Grant us your courage and lend us your strength so that through resting in him that we would be a witness of your peace to the world. All this we pray for in that name of the, your son, that little Christ child. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you that Christmas peace. Amen.